So we have these cubes. So if we move along the uh, the x uh, component, uh, our transformation is from this cube to here, and along the y component we go up. Okay, so this is x, this is y, and here it will be x y. Okay, and here in the opposite direction there are the inverses. Okay. <sighs> so. Uh, uh, the way we do this is that we first construct the cipher surfaces for the for the links, and then what we want to do this time is to construct C complexes. So when we when we build our cipher surfaces, and we write this part, we have that these surfaces can intersect, but they can intersect in different ways. So uh, these are the three types of intersections that we can have, which are, okay, let's say here, circle. So this is, um, This intersection, which is just a segment, we're going to call it Raven. And we're also going to have a, a third type of intersections, which looks like this. Um, this is called the clasp. So the first thing I need to prove today, which is going to be our first lemma, so is that there exist cipher surfaces. Respectively. Okay, so cipher surface for a knot is just a surface whose boundary is the knot, okay, such that they intersect only in clasps. So, such that the intersection will be this is the intersection, just a union of the, of a disjoint union of uh, segments. Uh, Intersection F2 is a disjoint Okay, when we when we have such a, an array, I mean such a, a a surface which intersects only in this way, we will call it a, a C complex. So this is kind of a lemma definition. Uh, so, Monica, the second picture also has an intersection which is a segment. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, but who's, okay, yeah, this is important. So we're going to have this joint unit of, of segments, but which have endpoints in, in both components of the link. So one endpoint will be in, uh, let's say, this is K1, this boundary of the, and this is K2. Yeah, so I need the endpoints to be uh, in, in, in both knots. In this case, this is only one uh, the boundary, this is only one knot. So in here, uh, let's say here, if we see it like graphs, for example, I have a circle here, uh, nothing very interesting. This one is a segment like this with both uh, vertices. 
in one lot, let's say K1, just for simplicity, so the other one will be K2, which is uh, K1, the boundary. Uh, and in this case, we have this. It has one in, in K1, and oh no, this is K1. Uh, So this is what we need, that they have endpoints in, in, in both components of the link. Okay? Yeah. I mean here we also have segments, but we want this. Okay. But maybe you can write it down because it is a part of the statement of the member. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. With endpoints. Oh, okay. With let's say one endpoint. On on each component. Of the link. Um, which we said uh, it was this, right? Okay. So, uh, okay, when we have this then we will call this the C complex, which I will write in another folder here. C complex, no. So let's check the proof for this lemma. Uh, wait a moment. So to, to make sure that everybody is following this, so let me just try to repeat what is being said here. We have an arbitrary link in S3, a chain linker smooth or PL link. Then it is claimed that the components of this link uh, have bound surfaces, they are called the effort surfaces, mm -hmm. uh, which have intersection of a specific form. Namely, they have just clasps and they don't have other types of singularities. Yeah, yeah, they don't have any other types. Okay. And yeah, whenever we have such a pair of Zyphert surfaces for the two components of our link, uh, this pair of Zyphert surfaces is called a C complex. Yes. Yeah, yeah, precisely that. Okay. So let's see the proof for it. Okay. Okay, first of all, uh, let us take uh, let us take care of the circles, which are kind of the most complicated. Okay, so we can have this intersection in circle. Well, okay, I guess the, the proof should start by saying that we can uh, always find a couple of different surfaces which intersect in a generic way, so which are transversal to each other. And then they intersect along uh, a one-dimensional manifold, which has some components. Some of them are closed, some of them are arcs. Yes, so okay. Actually, there are, these are the three cases that were on the other side of the board. Yeah, okay. So let's call F1 and F2 our cipher surfaces, then which intersect uh, Transversely, like, <laughs> and they can intersect only in these three ways, right? Okay. So now, uh, how do we pass from circle to clasp? Because we want all, to all of them to be clasps, or and how can we pass from ribbon to clasp? This is what we want to do. So first of all, we can choose a curve here and push along, the, along this curve. So it will be like, it will look like, uh, huh. let me make it a small one. It's like, no, like we're pushing with a finger. So it is a small cylinder here. 
towards the, the, it has to be here, which is our other knot. Yeah. So now we have that this, uh, this uh, intersection actually has two endpoints, which is this part. In the same in the same component of the link, if we call this, if we call this K1 and this K2, our graph now will look like this. Both are in K2. Uh, yeah, let's say E1 I, I don't think K1 is shown correctly. Maybe there is no K1 in that picture. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay. Um, so we actually here here E one and E two uh, are inside uh, are inside K two. So uh, this is a ribbon. This is the definition of of a ribbon. So now. What is left to do is how to pass from a ribbon to a clasp. So if we have a ribbon here. Uh -huh. Monica, I'm sorry, but we, we have some problem with quality of the video. Can you do something about that? Um, I don't know. Uh, is it better? Not really, but it's readable, I think. Okay. Oh, it's better now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this works, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So we have this and uh, yeah, this boundary Let's call it K1 and the other boundary, maybe I should use another color. I think it's pretty clear already. This is K2. And both endpoints are in K1. So now we do the same about the pushing along a curve. And what we will have is a similar picture to this one. Yeah, so now we have these two parts, this and this. So we have two uh, edges whose endpoints are one in, in K2 and one in K1, right? And this is also K2 and K1. So we are getting for for each circle, we're having a ribbon, and for each ribbon, we have two clasps. Okay. Okay. So, I have a question. What if you have one circle inside another on one of the surfaces? Yeah. Okay. So if they intersect in this way, uh, I will draw it here. Um, let's say if there's another circle in here. So we start with the with the one which is um, um, outside, outermost. I think it's the expression we put it, and then we will have one ribbon but and one circle, and with the circle we do the same, and we will get another ribbon. Yeah. So we start by you know. Like, so can you can you draw what what happens with the small circle? Okay, so here, I, I think here nothing has happened yet. I mean, it's still here. And 
how to uh, remove that small circle? Uh, we should do the same. I mean, here, to here. So, boy, I don't know how to draw this. We, we push along the same curve with, that we chose as well with this extra piece. So I think it will be something like, I don't know if inside this cylinder. Okay, maybe it is clear now. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, we get two clasps, and this is this is the proof. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about this proof? No, I don't think there are questions about this. Okay, let's continue. Okay. So after this, we know that we can always have C complexes for any uh, two component link. And we want to know what happens with the homology. So let's see what we have to say about the homology of this of this C complex. Okay. So uh, let's say we have already our C complex. It will look something like this. We have our clasps. I will draw three clasps. Yeah, I'm just like here, 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 here. Okay. So as I mentioned before, the cipher surfaces are going to be called F1 for, for the first knot and F2 for the second knot. And the intersections are just are going to be just clasps, but we can also have uh, in these surfaces uh, handles. Like this. Handles. They, we usually draw them like uh, two different bands. I'm going to go to the other way. They can also have twists. And knots. So anything can, can happen in, in the rest of the surface. But the important part is that in the intersections, we only have clasps. And we, will, we can also have this case when these bands, for example, link here. Or maybe I'm going to draw. And the other one here, let's make it with a twist. Yeah, anything can happen here. Uh, and uh, okay. So to to know what happens with the homology here, I'm gonna find some other parts. So first. 
first, we can take pieces of the knots. Uh, I need to split F, my, our F1 and F2 in two different parts. Okay, so I use some time to, to find this. Uh, So, I'm going to call sigma i a regular neighborhood of this part which contains the clusters. I want it to be a bit more friendly, not so curvy. Because we're going to make a lot, we're going to need a lot of drawings here. So, this is our F1, this is our F2. All this part, this shaded part, with the intersections as well, is going to be our sigma 2. And similarly, sigma 1. And the rest of the surface is going to be S1, uh, but we close it. So we're going to have this intersection. We close it. So this is going to be S2 together with this segment. And our intersection, I'm going to call it J. So in these neighborhoods, uh, as I will be neighborhoods of clasps. Sorry? Neighborhoods of clasps. Yes. Uh, I minus sigma I and we close it. And J I are gonna be our intersections. Maybe you can show some handle, like a door handle in S1 uh, to make it more clear that it should stay inside S1 and not at sigma. Ah, uh, this. Or how any other... This was good, uh, but I mean, so you have this Handles consisting of pairs of ribbons. Yes. But you could also have a handle in the interior of S1. Can you draw oh, that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can draw. Yes. Let's let's put it like this. <laughs> yeah, I can have the uh, handles here. Yeah. Sure. I don't know already. Is that okay? Yeah, like Thank you. Here, yeah, yes. So this picture could be much more complicated if this uh, handles link with the clasps and clasps link with each other. Uh, so this is not the most general type of such a picture, but just some uh, simple uh, type. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to denote, yes, like in general, uh, our general sigma, we will just, we'll be just in union of sigma one, sigma two, as, as well will be S1, S2, uh, J will be J1, J2, and so on. So here we have uh, a Meyer Vietnamese sequence. Oh, should I? I think I should write it here. Maybe here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so here we can have easily a higher metric sequence because we have uh, S and sigma intersecting in the segment, and uh, and the union is the F. So uh, let's, let's see. So this is the intersection, which is J. Then the sum of both. Then we go to the full uh, to the union, and then we go to H zero. So we want to we want to know what's going on here. Okay, I'm, I stop here. Okay, so first of all, uh, because if we see the picture, this intersection of uh, sigmas and s are just uh, segments, and here we get zero. Uh, and what else? This is uh, Z2 because we have two segments. And also we have is isomorphic to this sum. And this is also uh, yeah, that... because to prove that you first should mention that some arrow is a monomorphism of zero. Yeah. Uh... From H zero of J to H zero of S, I yes. think we just have an isomorphism. Oh, here to here, yes. Yeah, so this is isomorphic to this one. So uh, this is a monomorphism. And so we can have this isomorphism here. Yeah. So then, just... then the arrow from H to H0 of F to H0 of J is the trivial, trivial homomorphism, yes? Here, no issue. Okay, so can you write above that arrow, which you have shown that it is a monomorphism, then you write monomorphism. Okay. Yeah, and this is this because uh they their intersection is empty so. no no uh, uh -huh. zero is not the same arrow as monomorphism but the previous this is a monomorphism but this is zero <laughs> And we can pick 
uh, to see this part, the sigma part, we can three points. One here and one here, which are not like in any, uh, you know, which are not intersect intersecting with the knots. And we can uh, find, we can draw edges that are joining these two vertices. So here, here. The only way we can pass from uh, sigma one to sigma two is through the clasps because these are the intersection. So we're going to have as many as many edges as clasps. Let's say we have our clasps, then we have we were going to have a graph with two vertices and our edges. Okay. Um, uh, our generators for H1 will be these cycles. Let's say we fix E1, uh, E2, E3, and we're going to have E2 minus E1 and E3 minus E1. These are our generators. Okay. In here. So or maybe you can write that H1 of sigma is isomorphic to H1 of G. Yes. It, is your graph. Because, yeah, because we can deformation retract this sigma into this graph, then our, our H1 is going to be the same. Let's call this graph G. So these are the same, well, isomorphic. And um, this is generated by the by the loops in the graph. Okay. So this is all we know now. Uh, and uh, I, I think I can write this generated by L mm, some index minus e, minus e one, the one we did. Okay. Yeah. Now what else can happen here? Let's go back to the picture. I think I'm going to go to the picture a lot of times. Okay. So let, let, yeah. sorry, let me summarize what we will need from the other mm -hmm. side of the board. So you have in your uh, C complex, you have three disjoint subsets, S1, S2, and the graph G. Yes. And the homology of this C complex, the union of these hybrid surfaces, is isomorphic to the direct sum of the of H1 of S1, H1 of S2, and H1 of G. Yeah, it's, yeah, the union of these three things. Yeah. Um, um. Uh -huh. And these are these have, for example, if S1 has genus G1, uh, we will have like for each handle we have two generators, this and this. Or if it looks like this, is this and the and the like very thin and far. So we will have uh, something with two G1 generators. Here it's the uh, three generated by two G2 in the same way, whatever is happening here. And here we have uh, generated by uh, R minus one, which are the number of cycles, I mean, number of cycles of clasps minus one, right? Because we fix one of them to, to get the cycle. So 
this is this is what we have from from the previous board let's call it like that so maybe you can write down those generators call, call them somehow because you will need them anyway okay so let's call them alpha something so here i will have alpha one uh, alpha two g one here i will have alpha two g one plus one up to two g one plus g two and here uh, from this number maybe i should have started okay up to alpha 2 g1 plus u2 plus r minus 1. Okay. So they have names now. It's quite difficult to see anything. Oh, in the green coat, maybe I should use another color. I don't think green is... No, no, no. The problem is with the quality of uh, video. Mm -hmm. Let's check again. Uh... Did anything change here? No. Yeah, it's better. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I do, but it works. <laughs> uh, okay. So now we can also. Okay. We can also think about it some other open subsets of F. Remember that F was our union of F1 and F2, which is uh, at the same time the union of sigma 1, sigma 2, S1, S2. Uh, and here we can have subsets W. And we're going to denote uh, W circle as closure. Uh, oh, sure. That means that we can take a set. And our neighborhood of the link will be okay. So these are our intersection points, right? And they have a neighbor neighborhood here. I will draw them like this. So it will be like the drilled. It's the image minus this minus this uh, circles. It will be. Well, you also remove uh, you remove the neighborhood of the entire link. So so you also remove some color along the boundary of each type of surface. Yeah, I'm removing actually, yes. That's right, that's right. Okay. And uh, so on, okay. Yes. A bit complicated, but okay. Yeah, yeah. So we have this 
Maybe, maybe you can separately draw F1 and F1 circle. So our F1 will be oh, what is happening here, the clasps. Here's one F2. And F1 circle is uh, this one also here in the intersection. Like this. Yeah, so this is F1. No, Monica, it's not like that. Uh, you don't take the neighborhood of the intersection of Zyphert surfaces, only the neighborhood of the component of the link. But also here then, Yes, you also have this holes. Oh, yes. Uh, exactly. Yes. Okay, my mistake. Yeah, so, so now it should be clear what is going on. We remove a color along the boundary and also drill some holes. Oh, and also the holes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so now we have this one and this one. So now uh, we know what uh, the neighborhood of F is just the union of the neighborhoods one and F one and F two. And also we can we can find we can we can take a y, which is going to be uh, x minus this neighbor, and we close it. So remember that x was the complement in S three, and uh, okay, and we have this neighbor, which is a polar. So maybe it's time to draw the Kodakami style picture. Yes. Okay. So here we have our map somewhere here. And we have this regular neighborhood. I'm going to put in part of this regular neighborhood of the knot. Okay. So here. X was the complement of this. So in red is X. And then uh, this is F, right? It's seen like transversely. This is our F. And we have uh, this neighborhood of F. Yeah, maybe you can write letters like L, F, and so on. Yeah, okay. So, okay, this part is F from here to here. And F, we also have it split into parts in sigma and S. 
Well, let's say, yeah, this is S and the other part is A, sigma. I think it's not important yet. Well, the way you define them, uh, uh, this is S circle and sigma circle. And what else? We have a neighborhood of F, which will be like this. And Y will be in blue. I will mark it in blue. X minus this. So it will be this part. Okay. So whenever we intersect the neighborhood of S with Y, we will have uh, this is our S. So this will be uh, I don't know, maybe green. I think, yeah, like this. This is when we intersect it with Y, we will have only these two parts this and this, which are going to be like portions of S. We're going to call it S plus and S minus, right? Which are our copies of this central segment uh, that we have here. But only for S, for the part of S. Yeah, is that clear? So let's write this down like. Neighborhood of S intersected with Y is S plus S minus, which are going to be our push ups of S. Okay. Hey, Monica, we have a new participant. Maybe you can summarize very briefly what you have done. <laughs> okay, so uh, we first of all, we we are working with two component links and we constructed uh, their, okay, after their ciphered surfaces, we proved that we can have uh, C complexes, which are, uh, we have the two surfaces and in such a way that they intersect only in clasps. So clasps are this uh, type of intersections which have one endpoint if in one component of the link and the other endpoint in the other component of the link. So after what after that we studied the homology of, of this thing. Uh, so if this side, if this surface of uh, for the not one is called F1, and this surface for the not two is called F2, and the unit of both is called F. So the homology of the whole thing is going to be the uh, sum of this part where, they, where there are no clasps, but we can have handles. So it is uh, generated in, it has two G generators, two G1, where G1 is the genus of this part of the surface. Uh, same for this other part, for S2. So we have uh, two G2 generators. And for the central part, uh, we realized it as a, as a graph. So we pick two vertices and then we join them uh, passing along the, the clasps, which are the intersection of the surfaces. So the generators here are we fix one and these cycles. So we're going to have. Uh, if we have 
our clasps, we're going to have R minus one generator generators. So here is our first homology group of this uh, Seifert surface for the for a link of two components. And now we are we are seeing I mean what else is going on here? So we picked some uh, some neighborhood of this, which is removing the um, okay. Uh, we picked a circle which are f minus uh, neighborhood of the of the link, so it will look like this uh, without the boundary and without the neighborhood of these intersecting points. And now we also uh, define this sets, which are okay. We have the neighborhood of the of the surface, which is kind of uh, the surface times an interval. We have y, which is x. x is the complement in S3 of the link, minus this neighborhood. So y is here drawn in blue. So here, this is the regular neighborhood of the, of the link. We're seeing it transversally. And he, this is our surface, f. So it, we can split it into s and sigma. And now uh, we see that if we intersect this uh, neighborhood of S with Y, we are just having uh, we are having actually just push-offs, two copies of the of the S, which is here in the center. So we're going to call them S plus and S minus. Um, this is so far what we have done. So now we want to know I mean in this case when we take a uh, sigma it's a bit more complicated because sigma contains the intersections so we cannot just simply say I mean yes we will have push-offs but it looks more complicated. But still, we can write it down. We can write uh, intersection y will be the union of sigma one plus with sigma one minus sigma two plus sigma two minus. Well, here is yes, sigma one plus sigma one minus sigma two plus sigma two minus. Right. Okay, so we have push-offs of, uh, of sigma uh, circle, right, okay. So now that we have this push-off, we can come back to this. So since we have these push-ups, we're gonna have like four four things. So I'm gonna write. Uh, I'm gonna draw the uh, a clasp to show this how how this thing will look. So let's say they intersect like this, uh, and I have this push-up. I will call it. Uh, with S one no, sigma one plus here behind 
I will have sigma one minus, and in here I will have again two copies of sigma two, which look more or less like this. Uh, I will make the corresponding. <laughs> This is going to be below. This is our sigma two minus, and this is our sigma two plus. So let's see what happens with the intersections. Because they are clasps, I have an intersection here. I'm going to draw them in red here. And then all these are dashed. They intersect with this one in here, this one here. I'm going to lash it here. And with this one, it intersects in here. So, is that picture clear? The push ups of both uh, sigma. Same as a uh, circle. One red arc is not very well visible. Sorry? One of the four red arcs is not visible very well. Uh, which one? The one, yes, this one. <laughs> uh, maybe I should make it a bit lower so it's bigger, I guess. Here? Yes, thank you. Okay. It's, it's just a matter that uh, the uh, ink is not strong enough. Oh, okay. Well, I, I don't want to. <laughs> so. So we have the original graph, which looks like this, with one vertex here, let's say B1 and B2, and we have these edges, right? We have three in the example. Uh, what is going to happen here? I'm just going to draw one edge. Is uh, we have the vertex here, but we also have a copy below. So this is going to be B1 plus, and this is B1 minus. And I'm also going to have here two copies of B2, B2 plus and B2 minus. So uh, what's going to happen here is that we, we have different signs. So for example, I will have, uh, how, how do I write this? G, I don't know, like this. So Monica, I'm not sure that the connection between the pictures on the right and on the left is clear to everyone. So maybe you can draw separately one clasp, one clasp without shift, without push-offs, just one clasp, and it will give you a graph G with just one edge. So could you please draw that picture? Okay, I'll erase this one because uh, this is for more for more clasps. Okay, so here I have B one, and here I have B two. And I'm just uh, drawing them by one edge. This is the intersection. So. Yeah. So what's going to happen in this in this side? So this is our graph G. And uh, what's going to happen in this side? Uh, our graph G delta epsilon will depend on the delta is the sign we take for the first uh, for sigma i, so it can be plus or minus, 
And this one can also be plus or minus, as long as it uh, corresponds to the sign, sign of uh, sigma 2. So, uh, let's see what is for it. Uh, I'm going to draw all of them. I, think I have four colors, so I can draw the four of them. Let's see G plus plus, then uh, G plus minus. Uh, it may be red one. Later. G plus minus and uh, G minus plus. And then the G minus minus also which color I'll use. So for G plus plus, we are trying to join uh, the first corresponds to sigma one. So B1 plus to B2 plus. And they have to come here through this intersection. Uh, G plus minus, now I need to go here to this one. G minus plus, I start with uh, one minus and uh, sigma two plus, which will be here. I mean, I'm in the power here. Uh, that's also no here. It will be G minus minus will come here like this. Yeah. So this is what's going on here. And the union of these four graphs is called gamma. Right? You will use it later. Yes, yes. So this union uh, I don't know, I guess I would just write it. Yeah. We're going to call it gamma. Okay. So, what happens uh, when we have more than more than one? Uh, more than one uh, class, because here we were only for one class, right? We get uh, these four copies. So what happens for, okay, let me organize my ideas. We have four vertices, one in each uh, plus, minus, plus, and minus. When we have more than one class, we have more than one way to go for from V1 plus to V1 minus. So I'm going to try to draw this with two plus, for example. So yeah, I'll make a copy of this. Here we have our intersections. Uh, here, 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 here. Okay. So what I'm having here is that I can have as well. Okay. I can have this. This is joined in a weird way. Okay. Maybe you don't need to draw this surface completely, you just draw the graph. Yeah. Okay, sure. I mean, I will have two ways to go from this one to this one because I can go here to here and then this intersection and then go up, go up again. So I'm going to have as many, I have these four vertices, uh, V1 plus, uh, V2 
V1 minus V2 plus V2 minus. And I'm going to have two ways to go for from here to here. And I'm also going to have two ways to go from here to here. And I'm oh, okay, two and two are not uh, interesting to connect. So I'm going to have two ways to go from here to here. And two ways to go from here to here. I mean, if I had more clasps, for example, three of them, then I will have three, three edges for, for each pair of vertices, uh, which always a different number, one and two. And if I have R clasps, then I have R, R ways to go from one to another. So uh, just for simplicity, I'm going to switch these guys, and uh, they will look like this. Our new graph is just a square. So I will have to be two minus here, be one plus here, be one minus here, and be two plus here. And it will have multiple edges, in this case two. Well, we can do three or more. R. Okay. So this is the picture of the graph gamma. I think we don't really need it for the statement of the theorem, but it will be used in the proof. Yeah, it will be later. It will be used later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can write gamma. Yeah. And here it didn't uh, didn't finish rowing G, but uh, yeah, like we can go here as I told we can go through this intersection of uh, plus and minus and then go back. Okay. So And now uh, we have this, yeah, we have the cycles in G. And now we want to see what uh, we want to define uh, this. Let's call it uh, A, IJ, as the linking number of alpha uh, delta epsilon with alpha. So remember that we in between these two push-ups, there is the original, uh, there is the original class. So uh, if I am like moving them alone, it will it will link somehow the original, the original uh, edge which is here. So yeah, and these linking numbers are going to give us our our cypher matrices. So I'm going to define a uh, delta sigma as all this. Yeah, I mean a, a plus plus will be when I use I use plus plus here. Plus minus will be when I use plus minus here. Minus minus and minus plus same. Okay. So this is our these are our four. Or for separate matrices. Uh, Monica, I'm not sure that uh, alpha delta epsilon was defined. Was it defined? Mm. So these four edges which you have in the picture, so you could call them, but the, the one edge which you have in the single clasp, you could call it for example, E, E1, yes? And then yes. these four edges could be called E1 plus plus, E1 plus minus, and so on. Yes, yes. And then, yeah, could you please write uh, this E1 plus plus and so on? 
Okay, so in here, this is going to be E1 e uh, minus plus. This is E1 minus minus. This one is E1 plus minus. And this one is E1 plus plus. Uh -huh. So, uh, our alpha, our alphas were the generator, right? generators of the homology of this, of the original class. So, for example, if I have a loop here, it will be, yeah. Yeah, so alphas were the, indeed the generators of H1 of F. And mm -hmm. H1 of F was split into three summons, three direct summons. Yes, H1 of S1, H1 of S2, and H1 of G. Yes. So for H1 of G, we actually know from this picture what is alpha delta epsilon. Yes, but for the other ones, uh, they are going to be zero because they are they are not linking the. I mean. <coughs> for for a cycle alpha which leaves in S1, for example, mm -hmm. uh, alpha delta epsilon will depend only on delta. And if delta is positive, then you push it off to the positive side from the surface S1. And if delta 1 is negative, then you push it off to the negative side from the surface S1. Yeah, yeah. So this is important, yeah. When we are in S1, it only depends on, on delta, and when we are in S2, it depends, depends on epsilon, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, indeed, yeah, and here, so. Uh, Maybe you can just draw, draw a picture. <laughs> A picture of some alpha which lives in gamma. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you have two clasps, uh, not without push-offs, just two clasps, then your graph has two vertices and two edges, and these two edges form a cycle. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I have two clasps. I think I, uh, oh, okay. Let's do it here. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you have gamma for the case of two clasps, but you don't have G for the case yeah, of two yeah. clasps. I won't write down. I won't write down. So I have my clasp here. My two clasps. And it will be, I have my two vertices here, V1, V2, so I have this. Yeah, this is my alpha. Yeah. And then I guess you can draw alpha plus plus in the picture just below this one. Here. Yeah, alpha plus plus is is uh, will be this, but also this. I can go here. Uh, where is uh, plus plus? And I continue along this surface, and I come here. So these are the two parts. Uh -huh. And maybe you can also show that alpha plus plus in the other picture of, of uh, the graph, gamma. In here? Okay. Yes. So alpha, alpha plus plus is uh, V1 plus to V2 plus. Yeah. On this, this cycle. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. Now I think everything is clear. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, something important here from the matrices is that uh, uh, alpha. Yeah, and I'm sorry, in your definition of AIJ, I think you need alpha delta epsilon I and also alpha J. Oh, how? The line above that one. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely, yes. Okay, so actually now you have defined the Zephyr matrix. Yeah, so the cipher ma ma matrix is it's, uh, the one with these entries. And uh, yeah, depending on this, so we have four different ones. But in these four different ones, uh, we actually know something else about them. For example, if I take uh, alpha a, a plus plus, which will be here plus plus, it will be the same as minus minus, but uh, transposed. And this is, how can I? Yeah, let's see. Let's see how it looks like from from one side to to try to show this part. So perhaps I can erase G. So suppose this point is alpha. And here we have the, the class, our two class. So this one will be sigma two plus sigma two minus. This is sigma one minus and sigma one plus. So here, are, here, here we have our copies of, of this alpha. All right, so uh this is alpha plus plus this is alpha plus minus this is alpha minus minus and this is alpha uh, uh, my, uh minus plus so if we see if we compare alpha with alpha plus plus it actually looks like when we have alpha with alpha minus minus but it's uh, shifted so and, and the same happens with this, uh, plus minus and minus plus. It's just the same, but uh, moved like in diagonal. So this is true. Okay. And this is the definition of our four ciphered matrices. And now we're finally going to go to the theorem. And I think I will not leave, leave this image anymore, so I can erase it. So what we want to do is to give a presentation matrix for the Alexander module of this uh, uh, C complexes. And our theorem says that uh, given our four. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Monica, I think yeah. this is the theorem by Daryl Cooper from 1970 something. Okay, I will write that down. <laughs> okay. 
Cooper and uh, Cervantes. Okay. So, given our given uh, a uh, four tuple or the four matrices before. For uh, a link now, uh, the Alexander module. Maybe you can say two component link. Oh, yes. Come on. <laughs> the Alexander module. Of L uh, has a presentation matrix. Uh, of these four, A plus plus minus X. Plus x plus minus minus. I guess I can write it uh, a little better with these uh, properties of the transpose, but I think this is good enough for now. So, because I don't want to introduce more and more notation. Uh, okay, and what is D? D has this form. Is a um, one minus y inverse in here zeros in by r and here zeros. So these are the identities in the uh, uh, yeah like matrices two g one times two g one where again g one was the genus of uh, f one. And G2 is the genus of F2, and R is the number of classes of our C complex. Okay. So we have oh, to... sorry. So let, let me uh, point out here that D is not a matrix over Laurent polynomials. Because, yes, because it has these inverses. So it's, uh, these are rational functions. Mm -hmm. But in fact, this presentation matrix is going to be a matrix over Laurent polynomials. Okay. Yeah. And oh, and just to remember, this Alexander module of L is uh, H one of X till tilde. Right. Yeah, where the X tilde is the universal linear cover of of uh, X, which is the the X is the complement in S three of the link. Okay, so let's prove this. Uh, maybe we should make a short break. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, so. Five minutes. Yeah, sure. So, any questions about this theorem before we make a break? So, any questions about what was said? Okay. Piotr Mikhailovich, are you okay with the notation? Is everything clear? Because you were a little late. <coughs> Everything clear in the sense of Paul Sergeyevich Alexandrov. <laughs> uh, after, after the break, I'd like to <clears throat> give uh, some uh, some examples, maybe, uh, uh, to, maybe to start maybe. with. How about now? Maybe now is a good time for examples. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, but uh, but the speaker ha has to be has to be have a rest. Yes. Yeah. 
Ah, ah, you uh, want the speaker to give examples? I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know. But uh, if if we if we get some examples, I will be uh, very um, very cl cl uh, clever. Listen to your examples. But uh, m maybe we will start with some examples. Uh, the, the next section, not. Okay, Monica. Uh, let us try to do some examples. Okay. Do you, we unfortunately we uh, 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 did not have enough time to prepare the examples, but maybe we can try. Yes, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay, uh, of course it cannot be the whole link because it only has one class. So uh, yeah, it is, uh, yeah no, no, let's not go for that. Uh, so how about, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I will use the help here. Okay, let's go to the other side. Okay, maybe we really have a break and think a little bit about examples uh, yeah. during the break. But uh, actually, I want to advertise a little bit the proof of the theorem. Of course, <laughs> examples are needed to understand what is going on. But the proof is a little bit interesting also because it has some geometry uh, which, uh, like, you know, it's it's there is a geometric problem to understand the geometry of universal abelian covers. So, how many examples of universal abelian covers of, of some objects do you know? Well, uh, if you have a torus S1 cross S1, then everybody knows it's universal abelian cover, it's a plane, yes? Yes. And so, this is a very basic example. Well, there are some other examples like if you have a wedge of two circles it's universal abelian cover is a sort of lattice in this plane but it's a sort of the same type of example and these examples are not enough there are also some other uh, essentially different examples so the uh, the purpose of this proof or maybe the interesting part of this proof is to see some uh, examples of uh, universal abelian covers, which are sort of fundamental because they are enough to describe uh, the situation for all two component links. Yes, so, so this is for two component links only. For three component, it's a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's make a break then. Okay.
Monica, can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. So I will show you uh, the Taurus link from Cooper's paper, okay? Okay, sure. So it's a very silly link, but uh, there is a, we know the answer, for example, in this case. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, okay, I mean, maybe I can try to draw it here. Can, can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, please try to uh, just write down this ciphered matrices in this case. So plus plus will be uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. A, I, I don't know if I put it all up or down, but okay. Uh, here, should I make it with three clasps? Is that okay? Okay. Okay, I'll leave for a few minutes. Uh, so you can, you can think about it. Yeah, sure. Okay, then I'll turn off the camera and
Hi, Monica. Do you have any progress? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I, I'm still drawing, but okay. Uh -huh. maybe, maybe two clasps is enough. Two? With two? Oh, you already have three. Okay. okay. Yeah. Three, yeah, so three. yeah so, three, is three is better, you're right, yes, yes, yeah, two, yeah. two cycles. Yeah, because otherwise I will just have one, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so A plus plus and A, A, alpha one plus plus and alpha one, they don't intersect. Yeah, because I'm shifting it here. So for me, this is this diagonal is zero when it's plus plus, and uh, uh, with the other components, let's say a plus a one plus plus with alpha two. Uh, why was it? No, but I, it's also zero. I get zero here. All right. And here, alpha two plus plus, which will be this blue one, with alpha one, it's going up above this and also on, on this side. So, uh, huh. I think I messed up something. I think actually everything depends on the on what happens in the middle clasp. So maybe you can draw a bigger picture of the middle clasp. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be my, this is piece of alpha one. This is here, here is alpha two. And if I, okay, let's see. Alpha one plus plus with alpha two. Okay, if shift is shift to here and above. Yeah. So plus is visible side and minus is invisible side. Yes, plus is visible and uh, minus is uh, invisible, like towards the, the board. Yeah. So plus plus should be, yeah, here and, and up, right? Mm -hmm. Positive here and positive here. So it should be here. This is alpha one plus plus. Uh -huh. So with alpha two, okay. Alpha one plus plus with alpha one, they don't intersect. With two, or also not. Now, alpha two plus plus. So it is uh, here and here. So it looks also doesn't. Uh, Right, this is alpha two plus plus. Yes, they do not link. Yeah, they don't. No. Uh -huh. so. And what about this alpha one? Alpha two plus plus with alpha one. Mm. 
the space here. I I don't see. I think it's zero. Yeah, I think it's zero as well. Okay, so we have only zeros in this. And that also means that it's uh, minus minus. Now let's see the other the other matrix. Uh, okay, uh, maybe I make another picture because here it will be an, a bit messy for this club. Uh, can I ask a question? For two cusps, this link is trivial, but for three cusps, it's not trivial, or it's also trivial for three cusps. Well, should we... it... Sorry, it's trivial, but it's not trivial for three cusps. It should be the torus link with linking number three. Ah, uh, uh, linking number is uh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, how, uh, two, six, right? Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe two, six. Yes. Probably. Yeah, because the, yeah, because the Taurus links have this, this uh, form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's all, uh, they are not. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, here again, I, I'm gonna draw, but uh, well, I got zero here. <laughs> so, uh, and this is alpha, I, this is one, and this is alpha two. And now let's see the plus minus because it was the transpose of minus one, so this one will be enough. Okay, I'm gonna go with green. Uh, plus minus. So plus will be here to the front and minus will be low, lower. So uh, alpha one plus mi minus will look. Like this. And alpha two plus minus will be here. Which is the first ciphered surface? On the left? Yeah, this one. Okay. So I'm trying to see how <laughs> these intersections here. So let's see the matrix here. Alpha one plus minus and alpha one. This is uh, zero, right? Because it's coming in front. I'm lower and I don't think yeah. Well, Monica, I don't understand. I think your picture is for alpha minus plus. Uh, uh, because the first sign corresponds to the first cipher surface, right? Yes, yes. So it should be, yeah, it's like here. The first cipher surface is the horizontal one on the left, yes? Yes. So alpha plus minus, it means we lift it up and uh -huh. also behind. Minus uh -huh. means behind the ver yeah. vertical yes. plane, the vertical surface. Up and behind. Yes. So, so it is up and behind. It should be here, like here. Can, can you draw it dashed? Yes, of course. 
Uh -huh. Well, the, the left part is not there because it is up. It is above above the surface. Above, above this, yes. Yeah, okay, this is better. Yeah, looks 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 better. Yeah. Okay. And alpha two uh, plus minus again is above and behind. So it will be uh, above. Uh-huh, it should be above this. But it's behind. So actually they don't go here, right? Here. And here. I don't know how, hmm. yeah, okay. Is, is that correct? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So this gives you linking number one. So alpha one and alpha two plus minus have non-zero linking number. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because here it's coming. Uh -huh. But so, but on the left, on the left, uh, alpha two plus minus goes above alpha one. And if uh, if we if we have uh, if we have link, uh, what what we what we should do with matrices? Ah, so the linking number goes here because we define the matrix as uh, the the entries are the linking number of alpha, alpha i delta epsilon and alpha j. So in here, because we are using a minus plus. We will have here minus plus, or sorry, plus minus. We were, oh. Plus minus. Yeah, so here is where these are uh, the entries of, of our matrix. So in this case, we have uh, one plus minus and one is zero. One plus minus and two is zero as well. Here, then uh, alpha two plus minus with one has linking number. Negative one. I'm not good with orientations, but <laughs> I can use this. And uh, alpha two plus minus with alpha two uh, also. Monica, but I think the picture is not quite right. It uh, on the right, it goes uh -huh. below, and on the left, it goes above. This green curve. Uh, yes. In the right, it's going above, and in the left, it's going below. I think it is vice versa because it is lifted above this horizontal surface and the red one lives in the horizontal surface. So um, on the left, the green one should go above. And here is the low reaction. Yeah, and here it stays uh, in the core, where does it stay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is 
the positive one, right? Yeah, I think this one comes here. Yeah, okay. And what about this? Uh, and here also doesn't, with HO doesn't intersect, right? Yeah, it seems the self-linking is zero. Yeah, okay. So we have uh, our alpha minus plus will be zero, one, zero, zero. And now we have uh, <laughs> okay, I guess I can erase this picture. This picture. So our so now we have a plus plus, which is a zero, minus x, a plus minus. So I will have this. Uh, remember this. Uh, So we have zero matrix here, zero matrix here, matrix here, and here we have this ones. So we will have uh, here zero x zero zero minus. Okay, I will have minus y here, right? Yeah, it looks correct. Mm -hmm. No. But maybe minus x. Oh, yes, it's, it's minus x, yes. <laughs> so this should be the presentation matrix of the Alexander module. Mm -hmm. But what about the D? Well, yeah, maybe you write down D to, to recall the general formula. Yeah, yeah. so our D was uh, 1 minus y inverse e i to d1. E2. Oh, my one and two look the same, and then what I are. So uh, we have genus genus zero. Maybe or, you can write G one equals zero and G two equals zero. Both are zero, so we have yeah nothing here and only this, and we have three clasps. Well, I think it should be I R minus one. Minus one, yes. <laughs> so R equals three, and that's the two by two identity matrix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we will have this. If I put x uh, equal to y, I get the, the, the usual Alexander matrix for, for, for one variable, yes or, or yes, not? You should, you should, yes, you should get Yes, yeah, we should. Huh. Yeah, so And if you take the determinant, you should get the Alexander polynomial. 
in two variables. Many thanks. So to check that the linking number is two. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, maybe let us not do it now. Uh, we have a interesting <laughs> proof. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so let's start with the proof. Yeah, well, we, we shall get there. The other center point, and it's something in terms, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least we proved that this link is non trivial. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have the TR. Right, so we have this uh, for <laughs> cyclic matrices for a two component group, and then uh, the Alexander model, which is the first component of the uh, universal abelian cover as a presentation matrix, matrix uh, given by this. It didn't quite work for the example, but uh, <laughs> let's believe it. Okay, so let's go to the proof now. Let us take any subset of our our uh, complement of the link. So uh, for any we have uh, remember that we have this. So we have we can also define it. Let us define. W uh, tilde and separate image of the only. Right? Nothing, nothing strange now. And also, uh, recall that Y. Uh, okay. Minus X minus the neighborhood of. Um, so So, uh, times it two, and this is because any knot that we have in Y, which is the complement of the neighborhood of the the surfaces uh, doesn't intersect, uh, I mean, doesn't have, yeah, doesn't intersect with the original knots. So we have this. Yeah, Monica, let me give a quick proof of this okay. statement. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, can you see? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me let me define the universal abelian cover. How do we construct it actually? Uh, so we have our X, which is for, for these purposes we can yeah, it's a S3 minus the neighborhood of the link. And it has two maps to S1 
uh, let me call them F and G, uh, corresponding to uh, cohomology classes. So for our link, we have K1, which is contained in L, which is contained okay. in S3. And then the class, uh, so H1 of uh, L contains the class of this K1, and, but this is isomorphic to H, uh, to the cohomology of the complement S3 minus L, which is X. Okay, so this gives us a class in the cohomology of X. And this class in the cohomology of X corresponds to a map into the circle. Mm -hmm. uh, so because H, because this is uh, uh, K uh, Z1. Uh, because the circle is K, K, Z1. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, so how do we compute this map F on some uh, yeah, okay, okay, I first wanted to describe the universal abelian cover. So we have this map F corresponding to K1. And we have the map J corresponding to K, to the class of K2. It similarly gives us an element of the cohomology of X. So we have these two maps and this gives us a map from X, F times G into S1 cross S1. And here we have the cover by R2, which I don't need to define. And then we take the pullback and this is the universal abelian cover of X. Okay, so this is the construction of the universal abelian cover. Mm -hmm. So now to prove the claim that Y, so Y was S3 minus the neighborhood of the union of ciphered surfaces. Yes, so F is F1 union with F2. Uh, so I want to show that actually this map set is, when re restricted to Y, this map sends Y to a point up to homotopy. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, well, above a point, we just have a bunch of points here, uh, Z squared. And so the pullback will be Y times C squared. So how to prove that this map is up to homotopy is, is uh, no homotopic? Well, let us consider any element of the fundamental group of Y. So we're represented by some loop. Really. Uh, so where, what is f, f of fail? So it is f goes from x into s1, yes? Mm -hmm. What is the image of our loop in this s1? Well, this is actually just the linking number of L with link number of L with k1. And similarly, g of L is the linking number of L with K2. So this is uh, the Alexander duality. We had this Alexander duality here, but it works just like this. We take the linking number to evaluate some cohomology class here on some element, uh, on some loop. We, we, we take the linking number of that loop with this knot. And now, for any loop L in Y, its, it's linking number with both nodes are, is, is trivial because L sits in the complement 
to each ciphered surface. Yes, so it doesn't intercept the ciphered surface of K1, so it has linking number zero with K1. Okay, so uh, what does it say? It, sa it says that uh, this map from, well, L, which sits in Y, and then this sits in X, and then it goes to S1, this composition is uh, trivial on homology, so it's no topicals. Okay, so I think this proof is finished. Any yeah. questions? Okay, please continue. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So it is because the linking number is zero with uh, with any not. I mean, any not living in, in Y has linking number zero with any of the of the components of the link. Uh, and now. Um, We, so we also have this uh, H I of Y. Jenga is uh, quite some work with you. H I of Y uh, tensor R module, right? So now, uh, okay. Now let's consider. Uh, this uh, one exact sequence. So of the pair. Le the Monica, lambda, lambda is Laurent polynomial of two variables or what? Lambda. Yes. Could you define? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, our modulus uh, are, yeah, the Laurent polynomials in two variables. I think I wrote it before, maybe, but yeah, so let's, uh, yeah. I will write it here. Plus minus one and Y. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is our, yeah, our lambda today. So, let us consider this uh, uh, sequence. This is this is so yeah. So to this we're gonna call phi one, and this is gonna be our phi zero, phi zero. Okay. So what do we have here? Okay. So uh, remember in our first picture where we have uh, the classes here. I will make a strange drawing here. And we split into sigma S and the intersection was J, one, one, two, two, J one, J two. This is about drawing, but just to uh, refresh our ideas. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have, like in this pair, by extension, uh, also like this, these homology groups are isomorphic to homology groups of uh, our neighborhoods of this. Uh, and uh, our neighborhood of S, if we remember also this this picture, the one that was 
kind of like this. We had our S here. And our S, our neighborhood of S was actually S times an interval. No, Monica, I think what you write is strange. That should be F, not S. Yes, I'm sorry. And this is just excision isomorphism. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. It's a, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you raise this because you can explain this excision isomorphism, yes? Yeah. I mean, we have, uh, okay, so we have our, this is, this is gonna, this is just gonna be our X minus the Y. Circle, isn't it? Yeah, the circle. And the circle was. Uh... Oh, that's a different circle uh, from what you had in the beginning of the talk. That this should be interior of y tilde. Yeah, the interior of y tilde. Okay. But maybe yeah, you can draw that Kadakami picture again. Uh huh. Okay. So we have here, this is our. This is our uh, this is our regular neighborhood of, of the link. This is the neighborhood of F. And X was all this. Y was uh, same, but except with, uh, not with this part. Okay. So we are taking the interior of Y, which is this part, and, uh, but we are not taking off the boundary here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. so let me comment that in this, exact sequence, we want to find the H1 of X tilde, which is the Alexandria module. And we know H1 of Y tilde, because it is uh, just the tensor product of H1 of Y with lambda. Yes, yeah, so this is, yeah. So what remains to understand is the third group, this relative group, X tilde module Y tilde, and also the homomorphisms. As long as we find the third group and the homomorphisms, then we can compute the Alexander module. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the uh, green line, the relative group is reduced to this uh, homology of the neighborhood module as a boundary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, let us think about this uh, let us think about the whole definite this step which is the union of uh, S and sigma, and S and sigma intersecting J. And we continue here. So 
things that we know. From this picture, we know that, uh, for example, okay, uh, neighborhood of F is in neighborhood of sigma and neighborhood of S, right? And uh, this will be our neighborhood of S, and this is the neighborhood of sigma, and this is uh, J, the intersection of both of them. So, things that we know is that this uh, actually is just uh, S cross I. So, whenever we intersect it with Y, uh, we have only the boundaries of I, right? So, S is the part with handles and sigma is the part with clasps. So yes. the, the neighborhood of the part with handles is simple. It's, uh, very it's, it's uh, just a direct product of this uh, surface S with the interval. But the part with clasps is more complicated. The neighborhood is not a direct product with the interval because the two ciphered surfaces intersect there and uh, it's more complicated. Yeah, but for S, it's simple. Yeah, for S, it is, it's simple. We're doing this. And uh, so, therefore, we have this, uh, this osmosis from this pair. It's just this. And this is just the suspension, and we know that for suspension of the space, this is also equal to i minus one of s only, right? So this is important to remember. And similar, and similarly for j, because j is inside s, uh, it's the intersection of s and sigma. So uh, I guess I shall just copy this line, but with j instead of instead of S. So J was the intersection between S and Sigma. Yeah, which is just a segment. Oh. Two, two, two segments, one two segments. in each cipher surface. J1 and J2, yes, two segments. Okay, okay. So now let us think about uh, what happens with huh, with the <laughs> distance with the tilde. <laughs> now here we have S tilde times Z2. Right? And also um, so this is so. So first, S tilde means the perimeter of S in the universal abelian cover, and it is of this form because S can be shifted into Y, and for Y we have this decomposition. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, what we have for the homologies in this case. Is um, intersection Y uh, should be H I of uh, it is just the S and S intersection Y, but uh, because of this, it's times our module. And the same for J. So we have HI on our J's neighborhood of the pre image. Okay. 
So, so we have all these isomorphisms and okay it's all to it's all, all going to help us okay so now j we know that it's uh these are just two segments right and we also know that uh, we also have this right so actually we have h2 of this uh, uh -huh. was this, but this is at the same time this, which is this, so it should be h1 of j and because these are two segments this should be zero right and what else do we know uh, we also know that uh, h0 of this same pair I don't know if this makes sense, but it should be h minus one of j. But okay, let's just call it zero. <laughs> but okay, so we have this, and we also have an inclusion map from j into s, right? We have from j to s. Let us call H H one, which is the one we're missing. Into S. Okay, so we have this inclusion map. It should be an isomorphism. Because uh, how do I put this? Okay. Because you computed both groups. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yes, okay. Cool. So very good. And now we go again to Meyer vitamin C. Monica, can you write into in more detail? Okay. So just for your previous computations, you can uh, Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is this, which is H0 of uh, uh, H0 of J, which is it has two components, so it should be Z2. That tensor lambda. Tensor lambda, yes. And also, I mean, here we have H1, which will be <laughs> again H0 of S, and it also has two, two components. And, uh, and also, you can see that the two components of J are included precisely in the two components of S, so that yeah, each yeah. component of J goes into one component of S. And then that mm -hmm. should be a nice and more of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this feature is kind of easy to remember. So now this is the algebraic part, and then it will be a bit more fun. So we have a minor vibratory sequence, which starts from 
Start from H two of J. Uh, we we agreed that it was zero. Then H two of uh, neighborhood of S. Then we go to the pair. Uh, Sigma. Then we go to uh, H two on of the. Then to H one of. Okay, I'm going to continue here. Let me comment on what is going on. So yes. we wanted to compute the relative, uh, to compute the Alexander module H1 of X tilde. Mm -hmm. we, we, we wrote the exact sequence of pair with Y. And then we wanted to compute the relative uh, group H, uh, H1 and H2 of the pair X tilde module Y tilde. Then that pair, by excision was the same as just the homology of the neighborhood of F of, of our two ciphered surfaces of their union, module as a boundary. And now we will compute the homology of this neighborhood module as a boundary using the Meyer sequence, uh, using the decomposition of these two ciphered surfaces into the part with handles and the part with clasps. So it is just this decomposition into the part with handles and the part with clasps to which we apply the Amarvitoris sequence. Yeah. Okay. So S is the part with handles and sigma is the part with clasps and F is the union of the two ciphered surfaces. Yes. So from here We actually have, okay. This was uh, as interior. Yeah, the things we have here. Right. So zero in the beginning is because you have H2 of J. H2 of J, J, yeah, of this. H two of this, and we already oh, said this here. Yes, yes, this. Uh huh. Yeah, and in the end as well, we have H zero of J. Yeah, I think it's the one that goes here. Yeah. Yes, it's the one at the end. Yes, the one in the end. Yes, so we have already the zeros, and we want to see what's what's going on here. So, uh, here we have. Uh, it this was H two. Wait, sorry. Here, this was H two of a circle, which was minus the boundary uh, cross I. Again, this uh, it's a uh, position. If I'm if I'm right, yeah, intersection. Y, which is times the the boundary of the interval. 
And this is H1 of S circle, which is H1 of S cross lambda. Oh, sorry, tensor lambda. You should have tensor lambda in the previous line. In this one, oh, yes. Yeah, because this is only, yeah, only this part. Yeah, of course. So, uh, what else do we have here? For F, we don't know anything yet. For this, we know it was H0 of J, which will be uh, a tensor, tensor lambda, which will be Z2 tensor lambda, which is just uh, this, right? Yeah, we also have this already computed here. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe you can just... Uh use that that arrow is an isomorphism which you had on the other side of the board which one oh this yeah yeah okay so here again uh, because it's an isomorphism we have this uh, yeah or i can just write it here no, no, that one is not an isomorphism. Maybe you can write on this side oh, of the board. Oh, not yet, yes. The, the map which is an isomorphism. Yes, okay. From J to S. Yeah, this is an isomorphism, but only, only this part. Yes, yes. So can you write it separately? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, H1. Yeah, only to the first sum summit of this part. Okay, to this. It's an isomorphism. So then that map into the direct sum is a monomorphism. Yes. So this is a monomorphism. Mm -hmm. And also, OK. Mm -hmm. That's all we have now, right? So, so the previous map is zero. Yes, this map is zero because this is a monomorphism. Yeah, well, I, I, because this is the same arrow. And uh huh. So now we need So in the top line we we'll already have a nice isomorphism. You have a short exact a very short exact sequence with just two uh, groups. Yeah, so H2, yes, we have this isomorphism, this and this. So H2 on, on this is isomorphic to isomorphic to this H1 of S tensor lambda plus uh, this H2 of uh, Sigma, this pair. Uh-huh. I run out of space. And also we have, uh, yeah. So we have two, these two isomorphisms. 
from here to here, and also this one. Yeah, okay. So, in the first sequence that I wrote, we have phi one and phi zero. What was our question? Well, so I think from the second line of your Meyer Vitoris sequence, you can get another isomorphism. I mean, we have this from here to here. Oh, no, no. But, oh, the but this is not the one that we are interested in. And uh, here, each one of. So the second salmon is isomorphic to the last group in this sequence. So the second song. It's more fit to this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, okay. So we have also these two eyes and more things. Um, now we want to. We also have that. Thing. It's a standard I... argument that if we have a short exact sequence in the middle, we have a direct sum, and the first sum is isomorphic to the group in the beginnings, and the second sum is isomorphic to the group in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually from this more sequence, sorry, we obtain these two isomorphisms and we can forget everything else. Yes. Now we just need to compute these two groups of with sigma and we will do it geometrically. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can write which groups we want to compute. Okay. So we want to find each one of uh, what we want. Sigma. But uh, I can't see uh, anything because machine machine stop. Oh, just right. now. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Is that better? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so we want this and we also want uh, H2. And also we want H2 of the same pair. Of the same thing, yes. Yeah, okay, I'll write it down. Uh -huh. So these are the groups that we want to find. And this is what we're going to do geometrically. <laughs> okay, so. Remember that our sigma will be the formation reflected into the graph. And uh, so I don't know if I'll just go directly to the pictures. Huh. Yes, I think the picture which you had in the beginning, uh, maybe you have to draw it again with uh, two shows of. of of the class. Okay. So 
Yeah. Uh, should I use? So we have this class. This class. I guess I will use three of them, right? Maybe you can start from one. From what? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, we, we have the, the graph here. This will be our V1, V2. Um, let us do it with three because it's funnier than with two. <laughs> okay, so we need three classes. Under under push-ups. So these are the push-ups. Uh, oh, make the over thing here. I hope it's. Uh, then I will fix it a bit. Okay. So now let's draw the intersections here, here, here. Uh, here. This here, yeah, here, uh, here, and then we come here and do this here. Where is that here and close? Okay, is that good enough? Okay, so, uh, okay. Now, this is gonna be our G. Which is uh, sigma. And these are our push ups, which is going to be called uh, how did we denote it? Was it gamma? Yeah, and gamma will be the union of, of all the graphs as, as we called it before plus plus, uh, plus minus, minus plus, minus minus. Okay. Just Monica, G. G is not homotopy equivalent to sigma because sigma has holes. Uh, si, si, well, maybe, okay, okay, maybe G is homotopy equivalent to sigma, but then sigma circle, sigma circle is homotopy equivalent to gamma. Yeah. Well, that, that is certainly incorrect. Uh, mm -hmm. Sigma circle is homotopy equivalent to delta, delta. Delta. Uh, which we didn't define yet. Yeah. Okay. Let us work with the uh, gamma first and then. So maybe you can draw a picture of one clasp to see what is going on without push offs. In that picture, we will see sigma, sigma circled, uh, oh, G, okay. G and delta. Okay. Sure. So here we have a class. So sigma oh. is the union is just the entire picture, but sigma circle uh, is when we remove a neighborhood of the link from this picture. Yeah, it's when we remove this and um, this part and this part and also this part right yes yeah 
So this is sigma circle. Sigma is the whole thing. But the uh, sigma circle is, uh, yeah, when we're taking this uh, color. Uh, yeah, okay. So G is homotopy equivalent to sigma, or, or you can say sigma deformation retracts onto G. But sigma circle deformation retracts onto a different graph, delta. Yeah. So can you draw that delta? Okay. So our delta is uh, okay. Let's let's see. Uh, is here we have intersection and it's this. Yes. Yeah. So this is our delta. Looks like an Sorry. In the case of one clasp, this is delta. Yes. And yeah. It's a one clasp. So, so can you can you correct what is written in the top? You have incorrect equation. G is homotopy equivalent to sigma circle. This is incorrect. Sorry. So, uh, in the right top corner, you have incorrect. Yeah. Okay. But can, can you write it correctly? Okay, so our G is it? So G is homotopy equivalent to sigma. Yes. And delta is homotopy equivalent to sigma circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in this case, uh, I think we already have the, the gamma in the fine, but okay. We agreed that it was going to be this square with four vertices where we have V1 plus, V1 minus, V2 minus, V2 plus. And we have, in this case, we're going to have three edges. Because we have three classes. And uh, so this is going to be our gamma. And our delta will look like, I don't know where to write it. Maybe I can erase this explanation for only one class. And I will write the delta for the three clasps. Okay, so we have three clasps, right? So this figure eight is going to happen three times. But these points are exactly on the same on the same uh, co copy. So these points are actually identified. This with this and this, and this one with this one and this one. Now I'm going to write the segments and then I'm going to shrink them just for simplicity, but it will look like, um, let's go with the red again. We have the mid circles and the identified point. And it looks like this. So this is our delta. Oh, and we want to understand uh, like all these maps. And what's going to happen in the universal abelian code? So maybe I can come here. 
because there are going to be a lot of drawings now. Okay, so let us see this map. Okay. So we have the universal abelian cover for figure eight, which was a lattice, right? So for these three figure eights, we're going to have three copies. Yeah. So I will I will write I will draw again this uh, figure eight. Identified in the words, just to have a clear image of everything. Uh, sorry, I'm taking my pen. Oh. Here, okay. Uh, this is delta again, and we want to know delta tilde. So we go, because we have three, we have also three copies of the lattice. Um, I will make it somehow. I don't know. <laughs> And another copy. Oh, it's not a perfect lattice, but okay. So, what's what's happening here? Um, on the other side, we also have uh, our gamma. I also need gamma. Uh, Monica, but wait, I think you didn't completely define delta tilde. You need identifications. Yes, I did. So, our delta tilde, yeah, it's going to have uh, help, you know. Uh, Yeah, so let's name them. This is X and this are Y. Yeah. So maybe maybe you can start with a picture of just one uh, figure eight and its universal abelian cover. How so so if you draw how it maps to this figure eight, then yeah. it will be clear. Yes, okay. So let's name this X and this Y, and I'm going to use this copy, but then uh, so if you have only one figure eight. But maybe you can draw one more copy of this lattice to make things clear. <laughs> okay. There we go. So, to this point, I'm going to assign the midpoint here. And Yes, these points correspond to new points here. And uh, what's going on here? Okay. So, uh, if I want to go from uh, from this to this vertex, I'm going to go uh, positive x. And then um, positive y, let's say. If I want to go from here to this one, I will take 
negative x and positive y. Right? Well, maybe uh, we should explain what is going on. So there is a map of that blue lattice onto that red figure eight. And this map sends vertical edges to one circle and horizontal edges onto another circle. Yes. So uh, it said it, this, this map sends midpoints of edges to those two points uh, on the two circles. And mm -hmm. now Monica looks at uh, some corners and the images of these corners are the paths in the figure eight, which she shows. Yeah, so this is our map from here to here, right? And what's going on here is that we also have uh, the same is, is, is happening. So we have these midpoints and the images of these corners are going to be these loops, but we have one corner in, in each copy. I think so far, you don't need corners. Uh, you, you didn't describe the, the delta tilde yet. After you define delta tilde, then, then you can talk about corners. Oh. Yeah, okay, so let us define first delta tilde in a proper way. So uh, these points are identified. And these are the midpoints in here, right? Okay, so we have the midpoints. Is this the same size? Yes, right here. One here, 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 here. So all these points are identified, and it's it's happening in every in every line. So this one is identified with this one and with this one. This one is identified with this one and this one. So these three are identified, but you know it's also happening on the on the vertical. I mean, we did it horizontally, and it's also happening here. So I'm going to draw it like this: only one, four. Here, 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 here. Okay, and actually, like if we see it on the side, from this side or from this side, it will look something like this. I mean, after this identification, but so it has three kind of a spider or some sort of yeah. When where this is the first copy, this is the second copy, and this is the third copy. So this is how our delta uh, tilde uh, works. And now, uh, okay, now we can talk about these corners. So since this point that is identified with this one and this one with this one, we can have different types of cycles here. So we, we have two types of cycles. The, the, I mean, let's call it obvious one, which is going to be the completing the square. And there are other types of cycles because we have these identifications. So we're actually, we're going to have like, let's say the corner in the second copy, but also the corner in the first copy or, or second and, and third. Right, so we also have this kind of cycles here. And yeah, remember where we were talking about homology of these things. So what about the images of these guys in here? Okay, so in here the images are of this square will be a whole figure eight, and if we take this and then the copy on this one, we will have, uh, let's say, this and also this. 
Is that is that clear? What, that is the image of what? With our map from delta tilde to delta. Yes, I mean, uh, you wanted to show the image of uh, this cycle consisting of two corners. Yeah. No, I think this image is different because as you said before in the top picture, each corner goes uh, like from x to from from one from v one to v two. Yes. Yes. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. I see my mistake. Yes. Okay. Let us erase this uh, black part. Well, I guess it's more or less clear here. Okay. So, uh, each corner goes from this vertex to this vertex, right? So, when we have these two corners, we are going, uh, for example, in here. And when we come back, we're doing the same path, but in another copy. It will be like this. Yeah. Yes, these are our paths. And we can have for another corner, it will be a different path. Let's say this one, like, uh, like this, or it can be like this. Yeah. This type of both types of paths according to the signs of the, in, in our delta tilde and in our delta. Yeah, I think this is clear now, but eventually we want to understand the map from delta tilde to gamma tilde. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, so, so, sorry, from gamma tilde to delta tilde. Yeah, from gamma tilde to, to gamma, to delta tilde. So now let's talk about gamma. So our gamma was uh, this, Square with multiple vertices. In our case, it's three. All right. Okay. There we go. This is our gamma. And gamma tilde. We knew we knew this that gamma tilde was uh, gamma cross z two. So we actually were, are going to have like copies of gamma that are disjoint. So, 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 so this is because gamma lies in y. y. Yeah, it's because gamma is in y. Okay, so our gamma tilde will look something like this. I will uh, Okay, so this is our gamma tilde. Let's call it like this. And we want to understand this map from here to here. So let's draw your lens right and arrow here. So, so maybe you could recall why we want to understand this map. It's because we wanted to understand that homology of the pair sigma tilde 
the neighborhood of sigma tilde modulo the boundary. And that pair is precisely, the, the inclusion in that pair is up to homotopy, precisely the same as this map from yeah. uh, tilde to delta tilde. Delta tilde. Maybe yeah. you can write it down. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, a sigma. <laughs> Okay, let's. Uh, we have the pair of sigma. Uh, right? Intersection gamma tilde in. Into. No, no map, just this pair. In this pair, we have the inclusion of, of the small one into the big one. Into the, yeah. So can you write that inclusion? Can you say something? Yeah, okay. So we have... Okay, so we want this, and we also have this, and we have. Yes, so so gamma tilde and delta tilde are homotopy equivalent to the entries in this pair. Yes. So uh -huh. maybe you can write that. Okay, so here, okay, let me raise this part because I'm not using, I, I, I will use this side of the board to, for the things that we have to remember. <laughs> so I don't forget myself what, I, what we're doing. Okay. This is the word to keep in mind. So we know this. So, Gamma tilde, this uh, again, this this part, but this part is uh, uh, oh, we have to have that in gamma tilde. What is yes, and you can put new in front of it. This yeah. sigma tilde circle is homotopy equivalent to new of. Sigma tilde. Uh -huh. So in fact, in, in in those pairs, you you should have circles everywhere. That that sigma new 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 sigma should be new sigma circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In the bottom line, also. Okay. And here, G. Uh, G was R gamma, right? Maybe I changed notation. That that is good. Gamma is something different. Gamma is not G. Okay. And gamma is homotopy equivalent to that intersection. Nu of sigma intersected with uh, y. Y, uh huh. Okay. And you yes. can also add tildes. Okay. So from here. 
here. Uh, what else do we need to know? We have done that uh, H2. Uh huh. So from here, we know this H2 of this, which is H2 of this, right? Well, I, I'm just going to write it now. It's zero, right? And uh, what else do we know? We have the inclusion from the intersection into from the in, this intersection to this one. Yes, and this inclusion up to homotopy is precisely the same as the map from gamma tilde to delta tilde. So maybe mm -hmm. you can just try that down and go back to the pictures. Mm -hmm. So this incl inclusion will be just the same as this, like... Exactly, yes. Up to homotopy, yeah. Okay, so well, it's not, uh, let's put it uh, somewhere like here. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's to new, new sigma two. Oh, it's to new. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, because I'm using it. Okay. So let's go back here. Uh, So here we have this map. And therefore we have this sequence now. Uh, but you, you didn't describe this map yet. Okay. So, okay. Here uh, I will take Okay. I need to define an F, I think. Oh. Sorry, what? Okay. So here, let's say we have a corner. And what about the pre image of this corner? So it will be our, these corners, remember, that correspond to this, uh, there are paths joining vertex uh, V1 and V2. But in here, we have actually V1 plus, V1 minus, and V2 minus, V2 plus. So uh, the pre image of this thing of this corner will be chi okay. Oh, oh. Um. Monica, how about you first describe the map? Say where the vertices go and where the edges go. And after that, you can look at the corners. Okay. So, so the vertices are going to these midpoints, and the edges are going to be this. Yeah. So, for example, uh, V1 minus to V2 minus. This one will be uh, we, we start here. Let's say this is V1 and this is V2. So V1 minus, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do this V1. V1 minus and V2 minus. Yeah. And then also, this one, like V1, uh, this V1 again, we can take plus and minus. This one 
will be this. So, uh, this one is uh, B1 minus and B1, B2 plus, which will be this. And the other one is, okay, plus plus. Okay, plus plus. So, uh, when we have this uh, sort of uh, cycles here, the per image will be, for example, here we are joining the same, the same two, the same two uh, vertices, but in two different copies. So what we actually have is this, uh, this cycle here, either this one, in this case will be this and this, or, uh, Let's say this and this, which will be this one with this one. So that black cycle consisting of two, two edges between the same pair of vertices mm -hmm. goes on to the green cycle consisting of two corners. Yes, yes. Okay, so now we understand this map. And uh, okay. maybe you want to show that it is surjective on H1. You you almost proved this. Yes. So uh, yeah, I almost proved it because I showed this cycle and uh, but also this one. I mean, this one will be exactly this part. And this one will be the copy in, in this, I don't know, this outer, let's say, this one will correspond to this. And this one, if I draw it in blue, it will be the outer, right? So this is the other type of cycle we can have under for images. And therefore, this might be surjective. And uh, what else do we need? Where do we have? Let's write some algebra. I think it's image for algebra. Oh, also, you, you will need at some point to describe the uh, to describe the kernel of this map on H one. Yes. So, okay, if we want to describe the kernel of this map. We can think about, okay, so this corner, I mean, this vertex is actually identified, like we have all these four corners, and these are shifts by x, by y in this direction. So here, if I have a cycle, let's call it just alpha here, this will be uh, x, this cycle, and this will be y, this cycle, and this will be x, y, this cycle. So, uh, in order to, like, how, how, how do I describe this part? <laughs> So in here, we also have the, this gamma and x gamma and x y gamma and y gamma, right? So uh, let us take the f which goes from Mm -hmm. Let us define this f from any group to any other group, and f uh, tilde 
tensor one, let's call it like this. Um, which goes from here. Maybe it's just F tensor one. And that can be called F cube. Yes, oh uh, yes. Okay. So now remember that our Hmm. Let me think about this. Uh, so did you did you describe the kernel of this map on homology? I think you didn't. And you I think you don't need this F tensor one in order oh. to do that. Okay. So uh, okay, so the kernel of this map will have this form. Uh, so it will be this cycle minus this, this cycle, but this is uh, okay. If this is, uh, I think I okay, let's call this plus plus, <laughs> and then uh, minus plus, and then. Minus plus and then y plus minus minus minus. So this is the kernel of this. Okay. So okay. Maybe you can draw these cycles. Uh, in here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, a plus plus, which will join um, here. It will be this. Uh, like a um, uh, plus. Uh, What is your alpha? Yeah. Maybe, maybe alpha is something like E1 minus E2. Yes, yes. And then our alpha side have to be silent. So if I do plus plus, it's I'm going to pass from V1 plus and V2 plus, but I'm coming back. So this is my, my alpha plus plus. And then uh, yeah. yes. Maybe you can write that, that it is alpha plus plus. Alpha plus plus will be E two um, plus plus minus E one plus plus. Okay, but I, I mean just in the picture, denote that cycle by measures. This. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, x alpha minus plus will be, uh, we we'll go here, x alpha minus plus. It is this cycle. Mm -hmm. This is x alpha minus plus. And then from here, we have x, uh, y alpha minus minus. And we also are passing here. So now we have, oh, yeah, minus minus. Sorry, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, plus x, y. <laughs> Alpha minus minus and then uh, minus y alpha 
Yeah. Here. Okay, I messed up a bit. But it's this one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. And so can you explain why the image of the sum is no homologous? Mm, because we're having cycles. Oh, okay. So the images of these cycles here are uh, this this type of cycles here, which are zeros. I mean, oh, okay. Like I'm doing this, and then here, and then I'm going this, and then here, and then I'm doing this, and then here, and also going here, and then here. So I'm basically coming. How do I say this? I'm basically doing nothing. That's why I don't know. Let, let me show a picture of, of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is one corner and another corner. It's like the green cycle which you had. Yeah. Like this. And then one more corner and one more. Uh, and then Wow. Okay, so I think it, it should be drawn like, like this, probably. Okay, so this corresponds to one corner, one uh, layer, and then in the other layer, looks like this. I don't know if it is visible, but I think you you see what I mean. Yes. So uh, the image the image of that sum is precisely this picture, but if we choose appropriate signs, then these uh, parts cancel out. Uh, so we have uh, so actually this little surface here is no homology for this cycle okay all right so i think uh, you described now this map from gamma tilde to delta tilde you show that it is surjective on H1, mm -hmm. and also you found its kernel on H1. Yes. So, uh, and this map corresponds to the pair whose homology you wanted to compute. Yes. So essentially, essentially, you computed everything, mm -hmm. and then it remains uh, just to see how these computations Give the answer which was in the statement of the theorem. Yeah, but it's all already like kind of almost clear. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you can see in that for in that formula, yes, for the mm -hmm. element of the kernel, mm -hmm. you can see precisely the same type of expression as we see in the statement of the theorem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like this minus x minus y and plus x y. Yes. Yes. So I think this gives a, an idea of proof of this theorem. What remains is really just computations, 
uh, uh, and I think we are getting tired uh, pretty much. So if 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 Ola doesn't insist, then maybe we can uh, finish uh, at this point. So thank you. So, any questions, Sola? No. Let's wait a little bit, because I think she has problem with microphone, so maybe she's writing. She might be writing something. Okay. Monica, can you say something so that we see the blackboard? No. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So I should keep talking to. Okay. Another possibility is that Ole fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stop here. <laughs> okay, Ole, if you are not asleep, let us know now where we finish. <laughs> Okay, so let us finish then. So thank you, Monica. Thank you.